Let's talk about LLM Ops and bringing your large language models to production. Let's see how we can efficiently integrate GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 in our products, you know, because we want to maximize performance and manage costs effectively. Now, in this video, I'm going to try to cover everything that you need to know in order to bring your large language models to production. And first, if you want to get started with this, I recommend that you use the OpenAI Playground in order to discover, uh, for example, OpenAI's API's capabilities. And I suggest that you do that together with your team, as brainstorming can literally help you a lot by refining your ideas together in a group. And it's really great for learning, right? To see exactly what's possible and where you can actually focus your efforts. For example, you can check out prompts and use uh, the playground for actual prototyping or even incubating larger projects. So let's say that you now you got your idea, right? You have a clear task in mind. You discuss this with your team. You, you tried out some prompts. You kind of figure out exactly what you want to do. But now you still need to lay the foundation on a couple of things. And you need to determine, for example, the core functionalities of your app. And uh, while doing so, you got to try and keep your prototype as focused as it can on uh, data inputs and data outputs because this way you can actually iterate quickly all right so always try to keep that focused on input and output further refine and iterate quickly now you also need to choose the programming language i mean most probably you're going to go for python initially and also you can use langchain because it's a great framework and uh, another thing that you need to remember is to structure your project correctly and this is super super important and you can check out this guide if you're a python developer so now let's say that you got the basics in check. Now let's, uh, let, let's talk about handling unexpected issues with, uh, with GPTs in your application. Because when dealing with tasks that involve actual logical reasoning or, uh, or proper complexity, you might need to actually build more uh, reliable prompts. Now there's another great guide on this and uh, definitely check that one out. But uh, the overall recommendations in this guide can be broken down into, uh, into two main things. First of all, you gotta break down unreliable operations into smaller and more manageable and more reliable tasks. And this is called selection inference prompting. And the second one is to use multiple steps or relationships in order to boost uh, the system's overall reliability. And this is called meiotic uh, prompting. I hope that I got that right. And if you've been using ChatGPT, you must have done this almost instinctively. After a couple of weeks of playing around with it, you kind of instinctually know how you need to create these queries. So the term definitions matter less, right? But these are also good if you're, uh, if you're interviewing. Also, if you've been uh, checking out the hundreds of YouTube videos on prompt engineering, you probably got this mastered anyway. So if you implement these suggestions, you can actually enhance your application's performance overall, right? And even if you encounter some issues, you know, here and there, overall your prompts are going to be great. But let's talk about two main challenges that you will face uh, specifically when it comes to LLMs. And these are dealing with latency and managing costs in the long run. Now let's start with latency. Latency is the time that it takes for a request to be processed and then a response to be returned. And the main factors that are influencing latency are the model used and the number of uh, tokens that are generated. So the life cycle of a completion uh, request looks like this. And you can see that the bulk of the latency actually arises from the token generation step. So how can you actually reduce latency? And it's pretty hard to do it as it doesn't really depend on you from a technical stack perspective. But you can do a lot of good work on the model selection and on the prompt engineering. For example, you can choose a model that suits your use case. And then you got to think about your um, your, your model's performance with regards to speed and quality and the trade-off between uh, speed and quality. And you can then lower uh, the number of max tokens, you can inc uh, include stop sequences, and then you can generate also fewer completions in order to uh, reduce latency. You can also set stream to true in your API request in order to uh, start receiving tokens as soon as they become available. And that really, really improves the user experience as well. And if you're sending multiple requests to the same endpoint, make sure that you batch prompts in order to actually reduce the number of requests. And these techniques, you know, they might not be much, right? Because there's not much that we can do when it comes to latency, but you can experiment with them and then try to reach that balance between speed and quality. The second challenge, and the biggest challenge is actually cost. 
and most pricing models are pay-as-you-go and are based on the number of tokens. So in order to reduce costs, there aren't that many options, just either by using cheaper models or uh, reducing the number of tokens. So you can reduce the cost per token by switching to smaller models for some tasks. Or you can reduce the number of tokens required by using actually shorter prompts or fine tuning these prompts or uh, actually caching uh, common answers. So regarding the number of tokens, the general rule here is that one token generally corresponds to about four characters of English text. So that's about three quarters of a word. So about 75 words are around 100 tokens. You can manually check this or you can use this with a Python package as well. So you can run it nicely and then double check the token count before each request. And there you go guys, right? Like we covered various aspects of integrating GPTs into your production applications. And I really hope that you got good insights on LLM Ops and some practical tips on how to build a successful production app. And you gotta keep in mind that the landscape is moving very, very fast. So for each of these steps, you have new tools coming out all the time that will uh, help you more and more in order to automate things and glue them together. Guys, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And as always, I would love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.